So maybe Delphine, you can quickly tell us, uh, well, you can point me in the right direction because I want to show the video to the others. So you can point me in the right direction of where I should go in this video and you can tell me some of the things that you found out. Uh, it's, um, it's it's something really stupid uh, uh, with, uh, in, with what I am going to start, but um, it was Nothing like, is stupid. And um, it's almost certainly because, what everyone's um, thinking. This patient is sedated. It was a patient with uh, dyspepsia. I was like, do patients need to swallow or don't they need to swallow? And he says, like, you just say breathe in, breathe out, and do not really swallow. So that was um, interesting for me. Um, and um, also, like, the, the water drops that are still on the top of the camera, mm -hmm. because all my patients <laughs> are, like, coughing all the time. So what did you get from this video about that? Um, <clears throat> so, um, like, the... Um, Greater greater curvature is um, at like uh, seven because of the big folds, and then the anterior and posterior parts. Um, so, if you look at the stomach in this position on this video now, where do you think the what alignment are you looking at? Like, in what alignment right now of the clock face is the lesser curve right now? Also, um, the, the clinical uh, relevance of an uh, inlet patch was a little bit discussed. Let's talk about that. So here we have um, pulled back through the esophagus and presumably, right, so where is the inlet patch here? Right, that was um, at, uh, nine. Yes? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah this can be, this yeah, can be. There's all the summing here, yeah, right? Yeah. All the summing there. John, tell us about this inlet patch. It looks like an inlet patch. I did so many on that day, David, I can't remember, but uh, you'll see what I, my routine practice is. I come up in white light, go back down, and then usually put the MBI on and then have a second look at MBI. I think mid-esophageal lesions and certainly inlet patches are better seen with the, the, the narrowband or... or a digital enhancement, which ex ex um, highlights really the vascular structures. And the inlet patches are going to be intensely vascular compared with the squamous mucosa. So they're going to appear very, very dark. Uh, you've got to be careful that this, at the top of the esophagus, you can traumatize the mucosa. And that trauma on the way in can look like an inlet patch on the way out. But if you come out, if there's a distinct border around it and you've got vascular structures inside of it, then it's an inlet patch. So usually there's a distinct border between the squamous mucosa and that. So you've probably got two. You've got one at six o'clock here, and you've got the development one of uh, possibly at nine o'clock there, which is looks a bit unusual because it's not. They're usually nice and smooth and round, and they're supposed to be a, a embryological evolutionary thing rather than something that's developed. The one on the left looks like something in in creation, whereas the one at the six o'clock looks more typical of it, where you've you it's been there for a long period of time and is the esophagus is elongated. You've left this patch of mucosa at the top of the esophagus. John, um, I mean, I think the thing about inlet patches is I think they're a marker of how good your withdrawal technique through the esophagus is if you see them. But when should you worry about an inlet patch? Like when when is an inlet patch something to be biopsied, for example, or something to be concerned about? So I think there are two circumstances. Well, why don't we first just talk about some stuff which I think is might be concerned, considered as boring, but is also extremely important around gastroscopy. And so that was, I think, let me just be clear, I'm not certain, but I think it's this. 